we are joined by Yogesh Patil, who is the Director of Research of Oil and Gas at Dolat Capital. Yes, good, uh, good, morning, uh, good afternoon, Yogesh. You know, let me start off by saying, you know, Brent price is down 19% just since the start of July. We saw 4.4% slip yesterday. We are at the 33-month low. What is your outlook on how Brent prices are going to play out and what are the key factors one needs to watch out for? So in terms of the Brent prices, uh, two things keep in mind. Uh, in 2024, uh, globally, we are expecting the uh, global growth, oil growth would be in the range of 1.3 to 1.4 million barrels per day. But in case of a 2025, uh, considering the non-OPEC countries are going to produce some more, and the OPEC countries most likely to continue the same kind of a run rate, then we can see a kind of a surplus situation where the demand will be lower and the supplies will be more. So considering all these factors, we are expecting the oil prices in the 2025, mostly in the second half of 2025, calendar year 2025, uh, will be a little bit on a lower side, below $70 per barrel. That's the one thing. Yes. And when you when you look at you know prices going forward, do you expect the weakness to continue? Do you think you know the slip below seventy um, dollars per barrel is just you know a jerk um, reaction? What is your range on the prices in the near to medium term outlook? So there are two scenarios one should interpret uh, from the current situations. Uh, one, OPEC might continue to keep the supply cuts uh, to maintain the uh, oil prices at a higher level. So that at higher oil prices level, non-OPEC countries will continue to produce. Okay, they will gain the shares. They will gain, they will gain the market shares. Uh, so that one scenario, and that is the most likely scenario. Uh, OPEC can take a decision to cut or to continue with the oil supply cuts. In the second scenario, where the OPEC can again a uh, uh, little bit start producing a more as the, uh, they have just delayed their plans. The increase in the production by two months. After two months, they might add some production and which will again lead to a fall in oil prices. And that will again a little bit uh, destroy or we can say uh, give a pressure on the non-OPEC countries which are uh, in high, uh, high, higher cost of uh, oil production. So that countries might face a little bit challenge to increase the production. And in that scenario, OPEC will gain the share but non-OPEC will non-OPEC countries will lose the uh, market share. So, but in these two scenarios, what we are expecting, OPEC will continue to cut or uh, maintain the current scenario of oil production, and unlikely to increase the oil production even after two months. So that non-OPEC will continue to produce and will gain the share. So we that's why we are expecting the oil prices will re remain in the range bound of sixty-five to seventy-five dollar per barrel at least for the next six to 12 months down the line. Yogesh, you mentioned 65 to 75 dollars per barrel. So let me just take the first, you know, oil and gas sector in focus, which is the upstream. Now, prices for ONGC and oil and gas revenue realizations have been capped around 75 dollars. So what does it mean for these two counters? And what would you recommend investors to do who, you know, who are invested right now? Because the stocks are down 10 to 15 percent in the past month itself. Okay. So uh, the, the basic understanding is that once the crude prices, mostly on the brain prices started falling below $75 per barrel, it gives us a clear understanding that the, the windfall gain tax uh, will be uh, very, very negligible or zero uh, from the side of a government. So the realization of these companies are already capped, uh, oil price realization of these companies, ONGC and Oil India, is largely capped at a $75 per barrel. So the crude has already gone down to the level of $70 per barrel. So we don't expect any kind of a windfall gain tax till the time the crude touches again uh, $75 per barrel or process the $75 per barrel. That's the one thing. Secondly, uh, if you look into the ONGC and Oil India guidance, oil production growth guidance uh, for both the companies, they are uh, uh, on, on the verge of increasing their uh, oil production from the various states. So it was expected that the higher oil price scenario plus the increase in oil production that will help or inch up the EPS going forward. But now because of little bit uh, 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 fall in oil prices, 
will little bit impact on their EPS in FY26-27 going forward. Okay, and you know, when you look at the other side of the picture, oil marketing margins, now you started the day in strength, but now they've, you know, weaked off. Um, what is your outlook in terms of where the oil marketing companies stand in terms of benefits? Um, because you do have two aspects to it, right? Refining as well as marketing. So what's your outlook on this pack? So, touching to your question on the refining margins, uh, current refining margins are very low, two dollar per barrel, considering the today's spot. Uh, gross marketing margins, if we consider on the petrol and diesel, are at a super normal level, closer to twelve to thirteen rupees per liter. But there is a concept of integrated margins for these oil marketing companies, and which is closer to fourteen to fifteen rupees per liter. So it suggests there is a space for the governments to cut down the petrol and diesel prices because historically what we have seen uh, at least in last three to four years the integrated margins for these oil marketing companies are in the range of 11 to 12 rupees per liter and spot basis integrated margins are much much higher than that that level historical level so that gives us a scope to government cut down the prices of petrol and diesel by rupees two to rupees three per liter. That is a, only a scenario. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, there is one observation on the historical basis. Whenever we have seen a fall in the crude prices below sixty-five dollar per barrel, the government has considered this as an opportunity to increase the excise duties on the petrol and diesel, which cannot be ruled out if the crude falls below sixty-five dollars for a certain days or certain months. Uh, during the CY24 or CY25. See, so in nutshell, yes, at the start of today, OMC is reacted positive because the crude declined closer to two, two and a half to three dollar per barrel yesterday. But there is a kind of worry or concern among the investor what kind of a price cut can be taken by the side of a government, which will which will impact or drag some earnings or uh, wipe out some earnings of the OMCs uh, going forward. So that's kind of a worry is there, and that's why I think uh, the stocks are reacting negative to that uh, concern. Okay, and what's your outlook in terms of you know the fuel price cuts? Like, do you feel it'll be more delayed because now oil prices are seeing that negative trajectory? So as a rational, uh, what we expect, uh, government will still wait five, ten days or ten, fifteen days. Uh, they will look at the oil prices where it is getting stabilized, whether it is getting stabilized around $70 per barrel or $65 per barrel or $73 per barrel. According to that, we will see a call from the side of a government. We don't see within a week the government will come out with uh, any kind of a price cut. That's, that's my assumption. Okay. So if someone had to play the oil and gas theme, where do you think which counters you know, do have more strength in them? So at this point of a time, uh, we will recommend like the gas space looks very attractive. Okay. So uh, in a gas space, the city gas distribution companies like the Mahanagar Gas, Gale, GSPL, all these companies will definitely do better in FY26 period. So we will recommend uh, these three stocks, Mahanagar Gas, Gale, and the GSPL. Okay. And, um, you know, in terms of, you know, let's also talk about the gas segment. Um, we first of all, you know, one of the major news flows was the Gujarat State Petronel and the Gujarat Gas merger. What's your outlook on this and how this would impact, you know, the space overall? So, uh, in overall, uh, this scheme of arrangement, this was a scheme of arrangement uh, that the GSPC will get merged with the Gujarat Gas, GSP will get merged with the Gujarat Gas, and there will be one merge entity like a Gujarat Gas. After that, the GSPL transmission business will get demerged from that entity. So all in all, there were already uh, one or two concerns from our side, like the GSPC group, which is valued for their gas transmission segment at 6.8 times of uh, existing trading EBITDA. So that was a little bit concerned that the market has accepted that uh, higher trading multiple or higher uh, EV by beta multiple for that uh, trading segment. That's one thing. So from that perspective, what we have gained that market can give little bit higher EV by beta multiple for the Gales gas trading segment also. That's one conclusion. 
second conclusion out of this deal was that deal was eps accretive okay and that was a value addition to the merge entity of gujarat gas so the gujarat gas as a merge entity right now today trading as a merge entity has already reacted to the uh, overall uh, a merger scheme or scheme of arrangement more than 10% upside but but this is all about the uh, uh, corporate restructuring of these uh, gujarat gas uh, and their uh, gspc and their gspl companies but I wanted to highlight one thing here that nowadays at the Mobi there are a, a major crisis are going on regarding the container issues. So the Mobi based players, which are mostly engaged into uh, uh, engage into the ceramic exports uh, of India, they are facing the uh, container issues. The container freight rates are more than four to five times what generally used to in normal range and because of that they are not able to export their ceramic products so the ceramic inventories at uh, at uh, port levels have built up closer to 20 to 30 days which are at a high levels uh, ceramic units in the morbi region have started shutting down their operations for temporary period because there is no uh, containers availability for the exports and that number of units are going up day by day. So earlier of this month, uh, or the last, uh, in, in, in the August month, what we have seen closer to 150 to 200 units were uh, temporarily shut down their operations. Now we are getting an information that that number of units touched to the 350 units which shut down their operations. So ultimately that has impacted or impacting on the Gujarat gas uh, PNG industrial volume. So as per our uh, channel check and sources, uh, it has touched to the level of 2 MMSCMD kind of a PNG industrial volume uh, at, at a Morbi levels, which is drastically down compared to the 5 MMSCMD kind of volume Gujarat gas has reported in the quarter of first FY25. So you can see a drastic slowdown for a temporary period, uh, but that will reflect totally into the Q2 numbers, Q2 FY25 numbers for the Gujarat gas. So yeah, overall scheme of the arrangement of this Gujarat gas, GSPC and GSPL is EPS aggregative and value uh, positive overall. But in a near term, these issues will also impact on the Gujarat gas earnings in a Q2 FY25. Just wanted to highlight. Thank you, Yogesh. Uh, I have one last question, and that's on you know the LNG space. You know, Petronet LNG, one of the f two um, companies in the green today. Now, um, gas prices overall internationally have stabilized. This helps the imports from India's front since we do import a lot of LNG. So, what's your outlook on this counter and the space as a whole? So, uh, if we look into the Petronet LNG, uh, first quarter FY25 was really super quarter because the uh, government has mandated or given a section 11 rule which was applied to the gas power plants gas power plants were consuming a lot of lng and lng import was uh, quite good in q1 fy25 but as the monsoon started the peak power demand slowed down and which directly impacted on our lng consumption at the same time in the last one one and a half month what we have seen the spot LNG prices have gone up from the level of $11.5 per MMBTU to $14 per MMBTU. That's again a kind of a little bit of a tailwind for the LNG consumers in India because uh, Indian LNG consumers are quite price sensitive. Uh, that's the one. Second thing. Third thing just wanted to highlight here is the, the utilization levels of Petronet LNG Daesh terminal. Uh, so in the month of July, it operated close to the 110% uh, utilization. But in month of August, the utilization level was a little bit lower compared to the July month. And the September had just, just, just started. So the fall in utilization level during the month of August has a little bit uh, seen an impact on the pricing of the Petronet LNG during the last three, four days. So going forward, if the... Uh, LNG demand from the side of a power plants will pick up, then definitely the Petronet LNG terminal utilization at the age will uh, revamp, revive, and we can see a better utilization of that Petronet LNG terminal, which will de definitely reflect into the Q2, Q2, Q3 or FY25, FY26 earnings estimates. 
Thank you, Yogesh. Thank you, Yogesh, so much for joining us and giving us a perspective on how to play the oil and gas theme.